I think. Misfortune.gb, a creepypasta that I've already discussed before. It's probably one of my favorite video game creepypastas. My love for the story is heavily due to the way that the Misfortune game itself is described as functioning, and how interestingly different it ends up being from the traditional haunted video game creepypasta as a result. This is part of why I'm revisiting the topic. Another reason comes down to information. When I first made that classic video game creepypasta's eye video from nearly three years ago, I didn't quite look as deeply into aspects of the story as I wish I actually had. So here we are years later, ready to revisit and analyze this story once again. Now let's begin. It would probably be optimal for me to start with the story itself. Misfortune is a creepypasta about a video game for the original Game Boy. One that is considered by the minuscule number of people who have ever played it to be the scariest game ever made. The actual gameplay of Misfortune consists of solving puzzles and avoiding hazards. But not before you meet... it first. Shortly after starting the game, the player will be met with the antagonist. This character, considered to represent some sort of devil-like figure, will communicate via text boxes. I exist within the very fabric of reality. Do you wish to challenge me? Then let's begin. The title of Scariest Game Ever Made isn't given to misfortune due to the content of the game itself, but rather the effects of losing. If one were to be caught by the entity, fall for one of its traps, or make a wrong choice, they will be met with a Game Over screen. The Game Over screen and its music are often considered to have an effect on those who witness them, with the music taking most, if not all, of the credit. Many users of the early internet claim to have experienced emotional side effects, feelings of depression and dread that wouldn't leave them. One such user, well known, became inactive shortly after making such claims. One may find themselves saying that it isn't real. This couldn't be true. You may even feel the need to play the game for yourself just to prove you're the toughest of them all. Where can I get the ROM file, you ask? The answer is quite simple, if not a little jarring. You probably already have it. Misfortune does not exist within its own ROM or cartridge, but rather nestles itself alongside other games. You could be playing Pokemon Red when suddenly you're met with something else entirely. Methods for causing games to switch over to Misfortune aren't completely understood, and the mechanism behind it seems to vary between people. One person's method may not even work for another. Misfortune is also interesting in the way that it creates itself. You may have already noticed that these screenshots clearly depict a human from Pokemon Red. This is because the assets used to compose Misfortune are derived from the many games it exists in. Like a parasite, the game feeds off of the data from its host, allowing it to appear more like a coherent game. Known titles that Misfortune resides in are as follows. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Pokemon Red Version Spud's Adventure Poochie Carrot and Atelier Marie. This is where this story would have ended if I were still me from 2021. 2024 Crick, however, is now aware of the entire proper creepypasta directly below the information about Misfortune itself. I have no idea why I missed it, but it may have something to do with the fact that the real story itself was never included with the coverage that the creepypasta would get from the YouTube videos I used to watch on it. So after having that version of the creepypasta drilled into my head, I just sort of assumed there was no such story at the end. This somehow managed to result in me completely filtering it out of my mind, even when seeing it with my own two eyes. But what is the story of Misfortune truly? Well, the author would go on to describe a close friend who found Misfortune in his copy of Pokemon Red. After being shown the game, the author could feel something wasn't quite right. After that point, this friend would grow more and more distant and reclusive. 
That was until the day he said goodbye. The once tough yet outgoing man was reduced to a husk. Nothing could hide the grief on his face. He made the author promise not to play that game before leaving. That was the last interaction they would have. To directly quote this story, as I don't feel I can paraphrase or summarize this part and still do it justice. The next morning, they found his scratched and bloodied corpse hanging from his disassembled weight machine. The police concluded that he had managed to lift 220 pounds of weights over his head with the cord still attached, looped it around his neck, and released it over the other side of the machine, causing a strangulation as the weight of the other side yanked him upwards. The most horrible detail was that he was found with his hands clutching the inside of the makeshift noose, as if he was trying to tug it loose. That was it. The case was closed. The author, however, cannot bring themselves to believe this is the whole truth of the matter. I love this story. It actually makes me like Misfortune more than I already do, which I didn't even think was possible, yet here we are. The story could have easily just made the friend off himself. It's expected with old video game creepypastas. Haunted games that compel people to, well, harm themselves. Even the story seems to sort of play into this. The second you hear that the player ends up depressed without explanation, you just know what it's trying to say. Yet the text that follows makes it a lot less clear what exactly happens to them in the most haunting way imaginable. Just the mental image of the friend being in this situation brings to mind a terrible struggle. Something was there. Something stronger than him. Than us. And though you can fight for your life, you'll never win. You challenged forces outside of our understanding and lost. Misfortune always befalls those who meddle with the unknowable. The very first line from the Entity always did stick out to me. It states itself to exist within the very fabric of reality. This on its own could seem like just a form of intimidation. The Entity is using fancy words to seem bigger and scarier than it otherwise would be. But if you stop and think about what it's saying, you might just realize that it's a bit more interesting than that. Think about it. What is the fabric of reality? Using my interpretation of the term, and the more clinical versions you can find online, we can assume that the fabric of reality in this instance is in reference to the foundation of existence as a whole. In that sense, the entity could literally be misfortune. It exists within the very fabric of reality because misfortune as a concept is inherently a part of existence. With that, one could come to the conclusion that the being in the story isn't actually a demon or devil, but instead the manifestation of bad luck. This is why the game appears at random. Having it appear to you is, simply put, just really bad luck on your part. Something else worth noting is that the entity specifically says that misfortune will befall your loved ones in one of the screenshots provided. I wonder what that actually implies. Would such a thing trigger the game over screen? I don't see why it would count as a loss as the screen is there to cause you misfortune. If it were to appear, that'd go against the demon's words. Also, the wording is interesting to me. If we were to go off of my previous speculation and assume the entity is the manifestation of the concept of misfortune, the phrase, misfortune will befall your loved ones, could be a lot more direct than it seems. Just look at what happened to the friend. If misfortune itself is saying this, that could translate to, I will befall you, or I will happen to you. That would make it a, another way of saying, I'm going to get you. I also wonder what exactly the nature of the misfortune game is. It makes it significantly more effective that we don't know anything regarding its true nature. It's a haunting mystery. A part of me thinks you can't actually seek out the game. It won't appear to you if you're looking for it. It's like a predator in that sense. It seeks out those without knowledge of it because it knows those who don't know are more likely not to perceive it as a threat. 
The reason we don't see it anymore and never hear about it may just be because now most of its potential targets know that if something like this happens in their game, that they're in for a creepypasta experience. But also, what if that's what's most opportune for it? I'm sure there are plenty of people who think themselves to be too smart to lose. They may just go seeking the experience in the hopes of winning. If you're one of those people willing to gamble your life away, never forget, the house always wins. Alright, here is one of the biggest reasons this video is even happening. The story of Misfortune states that the game derives its graphical assets from a variety of other games. These games are alleged to be the very same games that Misfortune has been known to appear in. If you're like me, you probably have interest in knowing the origins of supplementary creepypasta media. Little known fact here, but I happen to have a wee little fascination with such a topic. I know, it's hard to tell. I can't even quite remember why I felt the curiosity hit me when I did, but I do at least remember when I did first look into this. According to my browser history, it was the 1st of November when I decided to track down the assets. I went through the list as seen on the Creepypasta wiki page, and in no particular order, I searched up the names of the games. It wasn't until my last search that I actually found my answers. Spud's Adventure. It's a game for the Game Boy, as one may have been able to figure out. One that I've seen people call one of the rarest games for the Game Boy. Not to be confused with Amazing Tater. Another game with a potato wearing a hat, developed and published by Atlas for the Game Boy, which is also rare. What the fuck has happened? Much to my delight, the Spriter's resource had a Spud's Adventure page, something that cannot be said about Atelier Marie, or even the aforementioned Amazing Tater. Upon viewing the page, it took very little scrolling for me to find him. A character I would come to know as Devi. Devi is one of the primary antagonists of Spud's Adventure serving as the penultimate boss, as well as the instigator for the game's main conflict. He kidnaps Princess Motto, expresses his distaste for proper grammar, and flies away. I went ahead and played through all of Spud's adventure just so I could get a better grasp on Devi. And he's kinda interesting to me. In Spud's adventure, Devi actually, like, dies. Not by your hand, mind you. In fact, his death is the result of him telling you how to defeat the real antagonist. Dododrian, who he has been working for this entire time. He also has a sister in the Japanese version. Only the Japanese version, though. Sisters are notoriously exclusive to Japan, and if you have a sister outside of Japan, no, I know you're lying to me. While you can definitely feel the developers trying a bit too hard to make the game longer than it needs to be, using the difficulty, I'm glad I got to play Spud's Adventure. It didn't just allow me to understand who Devi was, but also made me able to identify like a ton of assets used in Misfortune screenshots that I would have otherwise never known the origins of. For example, these stars are used as solid walls for some of the later rooms. This rock, door, key, and pushable block are all from Spud's Adventure. These floor tiles? They're from the intro of Spud's Adventure. These wooden posts? Spud's Adventure. Stairs, pillars, pits? Spud's Adventure. What about the game over screen? Surely that isn't from Spud's Adventure. That sprite is relatively detailed after all. That's right, it's not from Spud's Adventure. Only the portrait and text box are from Spud's Adventure. The text font does not come from Spud's Adventure. In fact, the portrait is used super early in the actual game. It's only used once though, for some reason. Thankfully, when it is used, Devi actually manages to finally utilize the fabled Ewer. This? This is his character arc. Now that we actually know the entity from Misfortune uses Devi for its appearance, what exactly is Devi, anyways? Well, according to Wikipedia, the online encyclopedia that anyone can edit, Devi is a demonic beetle. This claim is found nowhere else on the internet that I know of. I've searched and nothing really substantiates the claim that Devi is a beetle. Looking at the oldest available instance of this claim on the Wikipedia page shows us that it was added on April 11th of 2011 by user 
Emily Wyatt's lover. Whoever this person is, they don't have a Wikipedia account anymore, it seems. Looking their username up online, however, brings up an interesting result. A YouTube video by the name of Spud's Adventure, ending. It appears that whoever this person was, they indeed enjoyed Spud's Adventure. Perhaps enough so to maybe go on Wikipedia and fix up the article, which had been fairly barren prior to this. This is why I don't believe the Beatle claim, even if Devi does look very different between his sprites and official artwork seen in the manual. Maybe Devi is referred to as a Beatle in the Japanese version and the American manual artists never got that information. Or maybe, just maybe, they didn't think Americans would prefer a Beatle to a little imp-esque fella. Either way, it seems that whatever the hell Devi actually is will remain a mystery as examining his sprites doesn't make things any easier. Most of the time, he looks like a bug, but clearly has bat wings. He's never seen with it this tail that is shown in the official artwork, and his eyes are definitely not the same either. Also, what exactly is this right here? A hand? An artichoke? It's so weird and mangled I can't even tell. When I first saw Misfortune way back in the day, I always assumed Devi was some sort of black cat, making this a paw in my mind. It made sense, too. Black cats are alleged causes of bad luck. In fact, I always assumed it was like a play on the beckoning cat, which are figures said to bring good luck. Devi being a black cat mimicking the pose of a beckoning cat in the Misfortune game over screen would be intentional irony in that way. It made so much sense. Now it doesn't make any sense at all. Regardless of what Devi actually is, I think he's adorable. That's all that matters. Much like the other creepypastas I've analyzed in the past, Misfortune had an impact on me when I first heard about it way back when. It always stuck out to me as an odd story. It was just so different compared to the other video game creepypastas. Even now, all these years later, I can't help but read the images that accompany the story in the Top 22 Gaming Creepypastas video voice. It's just so iconic. I could never do a better job than they did. Hey, hey wait a second. What was that? Huh. Well, I guess that solved that. Can't argue with Tat's Top Video's Top 22 Gaming Creepypastas video from YouTube.com. I distinctly remember the game over screen having an effect on me. Not like an actual effect as the story suggests it has, but more just fear. The idea that it could harm me just by looking at it. Something about it really got to me, similar to that of Smile Dog. It also didn't help that at the time I assumed the entity sprite was like an original asset only leading to the game over screen being all the more unnerving. Like, I was actually looking at some sort of demonic force. You know, going into the comment section for the Tats video, I expected to see a lot more nostalgic comments because, I mean, that's usually how it is with the old iconic videos like this. But I was actually surprised to see a bunch of really lame jokes. That's... that's a shame. Misfortune is a creepypasta that, despite all odds, manages to somehow still actually be good. I mean, hey, it introduced me to Spud's adventure, which I had fun with despite the, uh... Yeah. It manages to set a fairly good atmosphere and introduce interesting concepts that have drilled themselves into my brain. The idea of a fucked up anomalous game randomly manifesting while playing a normal one is really fun. Especially when it manages to subvert the and then I fucking blew my brains out because Mario was too red trope that creepypastas tend to get flack for, while also giving off haunting implications. That there may have been more to the misfortune than just bad luck. For that, I'm giving this creepypasta a score of number scores are too reductive to encompass the true value of the human experience, and I would be devaluing my own experiences and thoughts by slapping an arbitrary number at the end. Out of 10. Until next time, 
Have a fungus, or misfortune will befall your loved ones.